Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and tomorrow, if you're watching this video as I release it, uh, Blender 3.5 will be available. What I figured I'd do is preview some of the most exciting things in this release, because this release is just packed with features. So I'm going to showcase three or four of what I think are the coolest features, especially for game developers, in Blender 3.5. We're just going to jump right in, and the first one is definitely the biggest new one, and this one I covered on the channel in the past. is something called VDM, or Volume Displacement Maps. This is something that uh, ZBrush Sculpting has had for ages. You can see one of them in action over here. Uh, this is an open EXR file. There's also instructions on how you can render and create your own using Blender 3D scenes. Not going to cover that today. I'm just going to show you how these work. So you see here, uh, it's kind of like a normal map, uh, just with more information. It's 3D. So you can see if you need to sculpt ears in, it displaces your uh, sculpt using these VDMs and, and it makes sculpting super simple. So you can see how you can do things like scars or zippers, or in this case, in this demo, which is by the way, is available for download on the Blender site, ears. So here is one example. You can see a number of different other ones. So horns, for example, go in here and you can see it works as a brush of horns more or less, and a couple, a couple other options right here. So we need to add a mouth. We got a couple of different mouth options here. So let's give this guy a mouth. Okay, that was creepy and not how I intended to do it, but all right, so I could have just gone there and drawn a much more human mouth as opposed to this horror show I accidentally created. But you get an idea how these VDMs can work. And if they use them with the new Blender asset system where you could have like a stockpile of these built in, the sculpting capabilities of Blender are going to be off the chart. So VDM uh, is definitely a cool new improvement. Uh, we got mirroring going on. That's why we're getting two noses here. But as you can see, these volume displacement maps are going to really open up the way that we sculpt using Blender. And this is definitely going to be a game changer. So I say the biggest new feature in Blender 3.5 is this new VDM feature. Uh, again, there are details on how you can create your own displacement maps uh, beyond what I'm going to cover here. I did cover that in an earlier video as well. So that is a lovely new feature. Now, this next feature is going to only appeal to a subset of the audience, specifically those of you that are using Mac hardware, the M1 and M2 series of GPUs. Uh, and if you are using those, you are going to love this one. To, to illustrate this one, I have to go back in time a little bit. So what we got here, this is a Blender 3.31. The Wanderer scene opened up in Blender. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unleash the uh, FPS here, and we'll just go ahead and play this scene. So let's go ahead and play it, and let's bring up the information here. And the key thing I want you to see is this right here. This is the frame rate of looking at the scene. If I move around in the scene, you'll see we get, I uh, say, 15 to not even 20 frames per second. So we're getting uh, 15, 18 kind of frames per second here. So now let's go forward to our new edition. Now here we have the exact same scene opened up in Blender 3.5. This is the day before release candidate, but this should be pretty much identical to the one that you're going to download tomorrow or today or whenever you grab it. So this is Blender 3.5. I'm going to do the exact same things. Let's unleash the frame rate here. Uh, so like so, let's turn information on and let us play the scene. And what do we get here? Quite a few more frames per second, literally 60 frames per second as opposed to 15. So how are we, uh, let's see, quadrupling our frame rate here, or at least tripling our frame rate? How, how did that happen? I literally, the exact same scene opened up in two ways. Well, one of the things you want to be aware of is we have a new feature, again, for Mac OS, is you now have... M1 powered viewport rendering. Now, previous to this, I covered this in the future of Blender video a couple of releases back. It was something that you had to turn on. Now it seems like this is the default. So anything you're doing, the viewport, the 3D viewport here, when you're doing uh, EV uh, or even cycles, uh, the rendering of it is now handled using the M1's GPU instead of the old OpenGL. We're now using Metal. Now using the Metal API just causes it to be just so much faster than OpenGL GES. Now one thing that you Windows users may want to be kind of delighted to wait forward to uh, is they're also working on a Vulkan backend. I don't think you're going to see three times performance gains like we saw here, uh, but definitely some big improvements in speed there. By the way, if you're also on Mac, you can also use it for rendering now, and you should see better rendering performance. There's also experimental Metal RT or ray tracing support down here, uh, which should also give you speed ups, but it may cause some rendering issues to, to also develop. But if you are using a uh, an M1 or an M2 powered Mac, you're going to find the 3D viewport is just substantially faster than it was before. So again, you're looking at three times speed up over 3.3, which is pretty massive. And you don't turn it on now, it is just enabled by default. 
All right, this next new feature is awesome for people that do any compositing because you can now composite directly in the viewport. So if you're doing some post effects to your work, you can now actually preview it directly as you're doing it. You'll notice here in render view, I can come over here and we can put compositor onto disabled camera or always. By default, it will be on disabled. Now what we've done, it switched it over here to always. Now do keep in mind, this isn't 100% done yet. So there's certain things that won't work in the real time viewport yet. So you come on down here, you're gonna notice we have simple compositor, our render layer goes out and our result right there. I'm going to do shift A to add something in here. So we could do something like, let's say we wanted to do colorize, change the brightness contract. Just, we could drop that node in right there. And then you can see we could just real time, just drag, make the brightness or darkness go away. We can change the contrast of our image like so. And you've got all your compositing. Well, not all, there's still a work in progress, obviously, but you could do your compositing and you can see it in real time in the uh, viewport as you're doing it. So for example, let's come in here uh, let's add a blur effect in as well, like so. And we can change the amount of blur right there. And you are seeing your compositing results in real time in the viewport. Again, you have the option of changing this to just outright off uh, to showing it in the camera effect only. So I don't know if there's a, there should be a camera in this scene. Uh, let's go here. So you can always see the results when you're actually in the camera view, or you can set it to always render and show. And that is your end result. Very cool. If you're doing any compositing work, you can now view it real time in the, uh, the viewport itself. Again, it's not one for one yet. There are some things that they're still working on, but definitely a cool new feature. Now, one of the features I was really hoping would make it in here is the uh, simulations for geometry nodes. Unfortunately, that was yanked from 3.5, but we do have another neat little feature. This one is smaller in scope, but kind of cool. Also, frankly, I haven't sacrificed the default cube yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So goodbye cube. All right. So what I'm going to do is make a mesh here of type monkey and we'll just move that GX move it over a little bit and let's create another one of type monkey and GX move it a little bit over this way we're gonna grab this guy right here and we're going to UV map it and we will do actually here let's go to front on view so I'm gonna UV map uh, project from view all right so I'm gonna grab this guy same deal oops come on switch UV map project from view. All right, so let's get our viewport up over here. So now we have two basically identical but not linked objects in our scene. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is show you the UV editor, this new functionality right here. So let's grab this first guy right here. We'll select everything. And over here you can see there is his UV notes. What I can do is I'm gonna go ahead and scale this guy up like this. So uh, grab, move that guy over. So we're gonna set up our um, I'm going to set up our scaling of our UV nodes. We're good to go, right? So here is our uh, UV nodes on this guy. Again, it's independent. So if I come back over to this guy, completely different setup. What I can now do, and this is actually pretty cool for people uh, that are working with replicating geometry. Uh, so I can come back here. I can grab this guy right here. I can go UV. I go copy UVs. And then what I can do is come back to this guy. Same deal. Instead, go, okay, select everything, UV paste UVs. So if you've got an identical set of UVs, you can now copy and paste UVs between objects. Definitely smaller than the other features we saw so far, uh, but cool nonetheless. So obviously those are just a few of the features in 3.5, but I think those are some of the coolest ones. We've also got grease pencil improvements, rendering improvements, UI improvements, file import, export improvements across the board. There are a ton of things to really love in this release, but I think the new sculpting is pretty much the star of the show. And if you're on macOS, the new metal renderer is a huge changer for just the performance you're going to get out of the engine. Uh, and of course the real time um, viewport compositing, big deal there, copying and pasting of UVs, also a nice thing to have. So Blender 3.5, 3.5. There is a ton to be excited about. What do you like best? Let me know. Comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.